the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the mahabharata i hope you are enjoying them during the last episode the pandava brothers yudhishthir bhim arjuna nakul and sahadev were born we also learned how the kaurava brothers the 100 brothers were born and we also heard about the tragic death of king pandu in the forest and later on pandu and kunti returned to the palace of hastinapur to live under the care of their great grand uncle bhishma the pandava boys started their new life in the hastinapur palace along with their 100 cousins the kauravas the good natured pandava brothers soon became the favorites in the palace their gentle behavior their kindness their respectfulness and humble attitude not only pleased the elders in the palace but also made them popular amongst the people of hastinapur it became quite clear that the throne of hastinapur would soon belong to yudhishthira who was not only the eldest of the brothers but also the son of pandu the rightful king of hastinapur dhritarashtra was nothing but a caretaker but this did not please the kaurava brothers especially duryodhana whose ambition was to ascend the throne as the next kuru king of hastinapur being the son of the present king dhritarashtra he felt he was the rightful heir to the throne he also felt that his father was unfairly treated when his younger brother pandu was made the king dhritarashtra's blindness cannot be the reason how could he then perform his duties as a king now hence dhritarashtra should have been the king in the first place and not pandu this logic reinforced his justification to claim the throne even more bhima was the other cause for irritation to the kaurava brothers being the strongest and the most powerful of the lot bhima would always bully the kaurava brothers all in good humor though he would challenge them all to wrestle with him and would then thrash them and toss them like feather pillows sometimes the kaurava brothers would run and climb up on the highest branches of a tree to escape from bhima but bhima would hold the trunk of the tree and shake it so vigorously that they would drop like ripe fruits duryodhana knew that they had to do something about bhima else he would alone take care of the entire kaurava clan so he sat down with his brother dushashana and came up with a devious plan to get rid of bhima one day he and dushashana invited the pandavas to a picnic by the river side it's awfully hot let's go to a river side resort and have a nice picnic we can swim play and eat delicious meals prepared by our royal cooks he said the pandavas happily agreed so the brothers both the kauravas and the pandavas went to this grand riverside resort built by the kurus it was a beautiful and luxurious resort lavishly decorated and had all the arrangements to spend a great holiday the pandavas had a great time they played in the gardens swam in the cool river but the core of our brothers had quite a rough time with bhima bhima sometimes tossed them into the water sometimes held them down under water for long periods of time until they gasped for air splashed the water around creating huge waves and threw the brothers out of the water they were all extremely annoyed with bhima and complained to duryodhana duryodhana said just wait my brothers soon bhima will be out of our way forever after enjoying all the fun and frolic the boys went to have a grand feast the royal cooks had prepared umpteen delicious dishes for the princess vegetables meats fish sweets you name it 
the princes were hungry and they enjoyed every bit that was served to them. Bhima was always a glutton. He would eat the equivalent of 20 men at one time with no problem at all. Soon, he finished all the food the chefs had prepared for them. Just as he was scraping off the last bit of food from his plate, Duryodhana came to him and said, Brother Bhima, you must be still hungry. How could this little food satisfy your appetite? I have made some special arrangements for you. I have asked our private cook to make some extra food for you. Come with me. I will serve it to you myself. Bhima was indeed very simple-minded and he didn't suspect anything at all. Rather, he was happy to hear that his cousin Duryodhana had made some special arrangements for him. He went with Duryodhana to a secluded spot behind the resort where Dusashana brought him plates full of delicious food for him. Cakes, sweets, pastries, pies and what not. But before bringing them, he had laced each dish with a deadly poison that could kill a person in seconds. Any other man would have died just taking a single bite. But for Bhima, nothing happened. He finished all the poison food given to him and it seemed to have no effect. Duryodhana and Dusashana knew that the poison will take some time to work on a huge person like Bhima. So they said, Brother, why don't you take a little rest under this tree? We will go and inform the others. Bhima yawned and said, Yes, I am feeling a bit sleepy. Let me take a quick nap. He lied down in the shade of a tree by the river bank. Duryodhana knew that the poison has started to take effect. Soon, Bhima sunk into a deep coma while Duryodhana and Dusashana watched from a distance. When they were sure enough that Bhima was not waking up anytime soon, they came to him with some strong ropes and tied his hands and feet together. Then they dragged him down the river bank and threw him into the river. And Bhima sank in the water like a heavy rock. Duryodhana and Dusashana went back to their brothers who were getting ready to leave. Yudhishthira was looking for Bhima. Duryodhana said, Bhima has already left for the palace. The son of Vayu challenged us that he could beat our chariots and reach there well before us. Now let's go and try to prove him wrong. They all jumped up on the chariots and left for Hastinapur. As Bhima sank into the deep waters, the river currents took him down the underwater channels, through the crevices in the river floor, down to the land of the Nagas, or the celestial serpents. As Bhima's body rolled into the river bank, it trampled on some of the serpents there. The serpents didn't like to be intruded upon by a human being, and they struck Bhima several times with their deadly venomous fangs. But the serpent venom acted as an antidote to the poison in Bhima's body. And soon, he woke up from his coma. Bhima flexed his muscles to break the ropes tied to his arms and legs and stood up. He was very angry with the Nagas and started a rampage. He thrashed them, trampled them, beat them to the ground. And the serpents had no other option but to flee. They went to their king, Vasuki, and complained, O King Vasuki, a human being has arrived in our lands. He is huge and strong. He is beating us up and if this continues for long, none of us would survive. Please, please do something. Vasuki and his deputy Arka assumed human forms and went to meet Bhima near the river bank. The Nagas had this special power and could change their forms quite easily. When Arka saw Bhima, he recognized him to be his distant grandson. Once upon a time, Arka lived as a human being and had a regular human family. Kunti happened to be his niece. Arka introduced himself and embraced Bhima. Vasuki was also pleased to meet the great Kuru prince and invited him to his palace. Vasuki said, Arka, we must treat our esteemed guest with our famous elixir. 
we must offer him a drink of our rasa. Rasa was a delicious and intoxicating drink which gave the Nagas their super strength. Arka said, Yes, of course. Come with me, my dear grandson. I will treat you with rasa. Bhima was served rasa in a big pot and in one giant swig he drank it all. He was served another pot and he drank it all too. One after another he drank eight pots of rasa and then he felt very sleepy. Vasuki took him to a beautiful room in his palace and there he lied down on a luxurious bed and went to sleep right away and didn't wake up for eight long days. In the meantime, in Hastinapur, Kunti and the Pandava brothers were extremely worried about Bhima. As soon as they arrived in the palace from the riverside resort and found that Bhima was missing, they knew Duryodhana had lied. Still, they waited for some time with the hope that he might turn up any time. But he didn't. Kunti was afraid that Duryodhana must have done something evil to his son. But without any proof, he, he couldn't challenge him either. She went to Vidura and said, Vidur, I think something bad has happened to Bhima. He wouldn't go anywhere without informing us. I am afraid Duryodhana must have done something evil to him. Vidura tried to console her. Don't worry, Kunti. No harm can come to Bhima. He is the strongest of the brothers and Duryodhana will not dare to do anything to him. Besides, Vyasa himself had prophesied that your sons will enjoy a long life. I am sure Bhima will be back soon. Vidura was right. On the eighth day, Bhima came back to the palace. When he woke up from his sleep, the rasa had given him immense strength and he felt invigorated. He thanked the Naga king Vasuki and Arka and asked to give him permission to return to Hastinapur. King Vasuki made all the arrangements and soon he was back to the human world. When Kunti and the Pandava brothers heard of this story, they were stunned. They knew Duryodhana and Dusashana were evil-minded, but they could never imagine that the Kaurava brothers could go to such an extent. Yudhishthira advised, We should not talk about this, and we should not complain to anybody either. But we should always be vigilant, because I am sure Duryodhana will strike again. So they continued with their usual life in Hastinapur as if nothing had happened. Duryodhana and Dusashana obviously were very surprised to see Bhima back in the palace, but they too kept their mouths shut and began scheming on other plots to eliminate their rivals, the Pandavas. Bhishma had appointed Kripa, a Brahmin, to train the royal princess the art of warfare and weaponry. Kripa was doing his best and the brothers, especially the Pandavas, were picking up the skills very fast. Bhishma knew that these boys would need someone who would be able to teach them the use of the most advanced weaponry and skills of warfare. And he was actively looking for one. Well, of course, he himself would have been the best teacher, but he was too busy running the administrative affairs of the throne since Dhritarashtra was severely handicapped due to his blindness. But soon a strange incident happened and Bhishma got himself the services of the greatest weapons teacher one could expect. The stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bonik. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license. <laughs>